here's some, what, um, let's see, yeah. Here's some items, so you guys can do a quick big five on yourselves. And I'll tell you the upside and downside of it. So, if you're orderly, you follow a schedule. How many of you follow a schedule? Okay. And how many of you don't? Okay, so one thing I would recommend is that you do. <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you why. Like, intelligence is a very good predictor of academic performance. And there's not a lot you can do about your intelligence. I mean, you can squander it, but it's very difficult to improve it. Conscientiousness, well, it's a trait too, so it's hard to work on, but we know that conscientious people get better grades. And it's reliable, and it's a powerful effect. And so, if your time use is organized, then the probability that you're going to be successful is very high. So, one of the things you might think about is make friends with a calendar, like Google Calendar or something like that. And I can tell you some tricks about that, because really it is important. Like, and I'm not kidding around about this. If you're low in conscientiousness, it's really going to trip you up as you walk through life. There's not very many advantages to it that I've been able to see. And I'm not assuming that just because you don't follow a schedule, you're low in conscientiousness. But it is one of the items that mark it. Um, the only the advantage I've seen so far to being unconscientious is that if you become unemployed, it doesn't bother you as much. And, I mean, that, that actually turns out to matter in some situations. So, like, you know, if a big company has to shed 50% of its employees, it's the conscientious people are going to suffer themselves to death for it. And the unconscientious people, they're not going to care anyways, because they weren't working anyway, so it doesn't matter if they have a job or not. So, here's one way of thinking about making use of a schedule. Often people are afraid of schedules because they think of them as a trap. You know, you make a schedule and it's like this little prison that you have to live inside. And, you know, and all you're doing in your schedule is putting down things you have to do or should do, and so you know, there's not a lot of fun in that. And so not only is it a trap or a prison, but it's kind of an unpleasant one. But a way to work with the schedule in a lot more sophisticated way is to, to think, well, I'm going to plan the next week, say, because you plan it day by day, but we'll take the week as the unit level of analysis and think, well, I'd like to plan a week I'd like to have. And then your schedule all of a sudden becomes a tool for increasing the quality of your life. And that's a whole different issue, you know, because you might think, what, what's the emotion that you suffer, assuming you suffer one of these emotions? If you have an essay that's due and you're not doing it, like, would you regard that as a pleasant emotion or unpleasant emotion? Okay, so is there anybody who is disagreeing with the statement that having an essay due or overdue that you're not doing is unpleasant? Everyone agrees with that. Okay, do you think you can characterize the unpleasantness? Like, what kind of emotion is it? Guilt. It's guilt, okay. Anything else? Frustration. Frustration? Frustration with what? Uh, you feel like a failure, like you're unable to... Yeah, so you're sort of frustrated with yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you need a slap, right? You think, I need a slap. And so, okay, so guilt, anything else? Anxiety. Anxiety. Restlessness. Restlessness. So that's kind of an agitation. Yeah, it's because your body knows you should be doing something, but it... You know, you're not pointing it in the right direction, so it's... Anxiety about you Yeah. Shame? Is that reasonable? So, okay, so the reason I was asking you about that is because, you know, most of the negative emotions are associated with neuroticism, but some of them seem to be associated with conscientiousness. And the conscientious negative emotions seem to be guilt and shame, fundamentally. And so recent research, and really recent, I only got this paper like a week ago, I think it's about four months old, seem to indicate that conscientious people feel less guilt, but they're more guilt prone. So if they don't do something, that makes them guilty, but they organize their time so they are doing the things they're supposed to do, so then they don't feel guilty. So anyways, back to the schedule. So, all right, you think about your week and you think about your day, and you think, well, how would you improve the quality of a given day or a given week? Well, one of the ways of improving it is to not put yourself into the situation where there are things hanging over your head that you have to feel guilty and ashamed about. Because that's a very unpleasant way of being. And, you know, if you have an essay that's due in a week and you're procrastinating, 
then the fact that you have to do that essay can ruin the whole week. And even when you're doing something that's positive, hypothetically, it's kind of that horrible kind of positive that you experience when you know that you should be doing something else. And so that's when you end up watching YouTube videos about, like, dancing cats or something <laughs> like that. You know, and it's, 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 at best, it's a guilty pleasure. It's not a pleasure at all. You think, like, what the hell am I doing watching videos of dancing cats, you know? But then you know that you're procrastinating, and that's low quality, very low quality existence. So if you use your schedule, you can think, okay, well, here's some times that I'm going to do this work. And then you can also sort of ask yourself about that when you're designing your schedule. Because you don't want to design a schedule like you're Adolf Hitler telling yourself what to do, you know, because you're not going to comply with it then. What you have to do if you're going to design a schedule is you have to ask yourself, all right, I'm going to set aside some time to study over the next week or to do this essay or whatever it is. How much time would I actually spend studying? And, you know, I'm going to go to the library for four hours a day. It's like, how many of you go to the library for four hours a day? You do. How much work do you do during those four hours? You do. That's very impressive. Is it more than four hours? And so what proportion of the time you're spending there do you think is actually efficient? Hmm. Hmm. That's good. That's good. My suspicions are that you're conscientious. So... That's, that's exceptional. I mean, people usually don't manage that. So, but, you know, an hour or two a day might be a worthwhile thing to schedule in. And I would say don't schedule in more than that to begin with. Because then you'll fail and then you'll stop using the schedule. And so the other thing you want to do is you want to schedule in things that you want to do. And then you want to look at the day or the week and you want to think, you want to think hey, that's a week I'd like to have. If I had a week like that, it would be good. You know, I'd be caught up, so I'll so that all that negative emotion doesn't have to accrue. And I would have done a bunch of things that I'm interested in doing, and at the end of the week, I'd be in better shape than I was at the beginning. And if you treat a schedule like that, so that what you're using it is to design the days and weeks that you want to have, instead of using it as this little, you know, jail that you have to put yourself in that you're not going to do anyways, then you can learn to use them. And that's one thing you can do to make yourself more industrious, or, or, or uh, more conscientiousness more conscientious. Follow a schedule. 